Hi there, Top Tip Tuesday time, Bob from Insidium here. On today's video, we're going to recreate this nice running man simulation with Nexus Explosure Effects. I'm going to show you the motion inheritance settings, and also we're going to do some emission weight mapping. So let's jump into cinema and we'll begin. In our scene here, we have this animated running man object. We've actually got two of these. We have got a very low poly version, which we'll use for the simulation. And then we've got a higher poly version for render time. And that's always a good way to work when you're doing these uh, heavy simulations. Right, so let's go to our exposure effects object. This is all on the defaults, apart from we've slightly resized the domain down to these uh, dimensions. So we're going to go to our object sources tab and drag in our low poly version. And if we hit play, we'll straight away get a smoke and fire sim. You can see that we've got very low detail here and it's flying upwards with this buoyancy, which is not look the, the look that we want. So in the simulation settings, let's just work at a voxel size, maybe put it down to two, which is going to give us uh, way better detail. And that's a better resolution to work in at the moment. All right, so let's get rid of this buoyancy. We don't want it all floating upwards like this. So in our simulation settings, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom to the buoyancy settings. And all you need to do is just switch off the gravity. And instead, we want a force which is going to force this uh, fluid backwards as if the guy's running. So let's go to our dynamics options and in the forces tab we can add a force here by default look we've got a turbulence and a vorticity but we want to add a wind so let's add a wind object now by default this is going to blow back on the plus z which in our scene that's perfect but if you need to change the direction of that wind what you do is you click on add wind object which creates this fan wind object and then you can rotate that um, to whichever direction that you want but we don't need that in our scene i'll just delete it out okay so we'll put our wind up to maybe 150 with loads of variation 100 percent variation to make it feel really gusty so now when we hit play we're going to get our um, fluid blowing backwards okay so at the moment um, our entire character is emitting this fuel and this temperature let's go to our object sources tab we want to make a few changes first of all i'm going uh, to get rid of this surface width we don't know, need any kind of padding um, with our uh, emission i just want it straight from the surface so i'll get rid of that i'm going to put my temperature up to maybe 1200 and we're going to bump up this fuel and the reason well i'll show you in a moment let's leave the fuel as it is but what we're going to do if i pull down this fuel i'm going to weight this emission now at the moment look it's on no weighting uniform emission so it's uniformly emitting across the surface of our object we want to use a gpu noise to weight that emission and if we put this strength up quite high it's almost like having a very high contrast noise where it's either emitting or it isn't white and black rather than greys so if we hit play now you're going to see that yeah look we have got that animated noise in our emission now and you can see that that adds detail uh, it's too big this noise let's put that length scale down to maybe 20 something like that but now we've weighted it we haven't quite got enough fuel so that's why i said earlier let's go back up untwirl that so our fuel will whack in more fuel now yeah and now we're getting um now we're getting some more fire so let's add a bit more pressure which will force that fuel away from our uh, object which always adds um both uh, kind of a bit of heat and also we get this nice kind of noise detail from that fluid being pushed away from the surface, okay? And then finally, we're gonna add some velocity from this object's motion. So he kind of kicks that flame forward before it starts getting blown back by the wind. Let's just put this on 100. You can go higher than 100, by the way, um, to get really exaggerated kind of motion inheritance, but we'll just leave it at that. That's looking pretty cool okay so now even though we've got that weighting we've got a little bit too much temperature here now we need to uh, calm this down a bit and we're going to do that we'll leave our source emissions now and we'll do everything in the simulation settings and what we're looking for here is the burning options what happens when fuel ignites so when this fuel is igniting it is producing this much temperature which is a bit too much so i'm going to put that down to maybe 2000 and then um, that's going to produce less temperature. Yep. Yeah, so that's a bit more under control. 
And also what I'm going to do, which will kind of increase the heat a little bit actually, is the burn rate's only on two. This is the rate at, re at which available fuel is burned. If we put this up higher, if there is more fuel that isn't being burnt, it is going to be burnt with this higher burn rate. So yeah, we're getting some nice kind of hot fire now, but it's not completely uh, taken over the whole grid. Okay, I think the smoke production could go way down. We just want some thin, wispy smokes. So we'll put that on point two. And then this gas expansion, um, this will make it kind of more explosive. Uh, now we've put that smoke down, we're getting some really nice detail here, aren't we? Now the gas expansion, if I up this, you'll see that it kind of will, will make it way more kind of aggressive as that gas expands on ignition. Again, not really the look I'm going for here. I'm going to put that down to maybe three. And then the ignition temperature, I'm just going to take this off actually, and that just means that if any fuel gets emitted in this grid, it will immediately ignite. Okay, and then let's go to our dissipation. So what we could do is, if we increase our temperature dissipation, those flames will die obviously much quicker because they're going to cool. If we reduce this, then those flames will kind of be blown all the way back here and that temperature isn't dying out much at all, is it? And obviously that's not what we want. Um, but we can mess around with the flame... Um, the flame size by adjusting the rate at which that heat dissipates something like that to me is looking really nice okay very nice so the only thing we need to do now is get this to a point where it's going to be kind of resolution that's going to be good enough for our final render so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put my voxel size down to say 1.3 and now this is going to obviously simulate more slowly now because we've got a much more detailed grid. But look at that detail that we're getting in our um, in our flames and in our smoke. That's starting to look really nice. But we're going to go even more so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to upscale it. Now, on this machine, I'm using a um, 3090 uh, graphics card on this machine and I know that what I'm able to do kind of maxed out my graphics card can handle around 550 million voxels at the moment with my voxel size of 1.3 the entire voxel grid if it were used is 148 so I can go way higher than this what I'm going to do is I'm going to upscale it once and then, so it's gone from the base, 148, to now 296. So again, that's well within my system's um, ability. I'm going to upscale once more. And yeah, so I can, I can manage three. That's within my system. If I put it on four, it's gone up. This to this, this is going to be too great. It's not going to work. So I'll put it down to three. So now that we've got that, obviously, again, We've hugely um, increased the um, the detail and the calculations involved in this sim, so we're not getting as good a playback, but we're going to get incredible levels of detail in our fluid here, and this is going to look great. So what I'll do is I will um, uh, render this one out, and then we'll have a look at that finished len uh, render and see how it looks. So here we are in the picture viewer and here we have our render of our running man and this is looking really nice. I'm really pleased with this. You can see that we're getting that really good movement and detail from that noise weighted fuel emission. Uh, we're getting the nice bit of motion inheritance as he kind of kicks his feet up. You can see that moving nicely and then we've got our gusty wind forcing our flames uh, backwards. Very nice. So that's how we can use these nice animated mocap characters to generate a cool smoke and fire sim.